Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's Frostbite. So you know the channels, you know the names, but do you know who they are? So I'm very honored today to have with me John Howe. Now, John is somebody who's a staple in many channels. So you've seen him, you've either sold to him or you bought from him. And so, John, welcome to the uh, show. Hi, Prospect. It's good to be here. Very oh, nice. I appreciate you coming in. I really do. So sure. do me a favor. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What, what got you into collecting? Can you give me a little bit about your, uh, your story, your history? Okay. Uh, it, it kind of started when I was like, in my teenage years. And um, I've always been a baseball fan. So I grew up with uh, Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris. So we, we used nice. to get those baseball cards and those gum packs. But the uh, the coin portion came when my I believe it was one of my uncles or my aunts I can't remember but it was a family member that worked for the government and through that process I got these uh, whether it was he handed it to me I don't remember but they gave it to me a 1964 SMS set and a also a 1960 and 61 two three and four uh, three of the uh, proof sets of the uh, Franklins, which I have to this day. And I could tell you right now, they are just beautiful. I had to take them out of their original folders because they uh, they needed more protection. And my uncle had been involved with me a little bit, showed me how to protect them. And that's where they have been all yeah. these years. And actually he gave me two sets. One set was, it didn't look that good. I don't know what, I don't know what, what happened to that. I actually sent that into BCGS and they denied it because I couldn't prove it. So it's kind of weird how it works when you have these type of, type of things. If you have them in the papers, I suggest you keep them in there, uh, especially if they're rare. Anyway, I, I, I got fascinated with this, but then I went into, of course, Vietnam and I went into the Air Force and uh, those coins sat in my, in my uh, uh, storage place at, at my house, at my father's house. and um, uh, I spent four years in the Air Force and came out of there and went to work. And it's kind of lost uh, track of, uh, if you look at 35 years, just almost nothing going on. Then uh, about six or seven years ago, I started to get back into the coins because something triggered me. And I pulled out those books and I actually had a bunch of wheat pennies. I had, I had about 15,000 wheat pennies, you know, wow. and, I, yeah, and, and a lot of them uh, are errors. And I'll get into that in a few minutes because that's a, another story about the uh, learning how to isolate and, and look at error, error coins. And that that's a uh, something that if you're really interested, you should, uh, one might want to take on because it's not even the money, it's the fun of it. I mean, the excitement of finding that, uh, you know, that second air lobe or, oh, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. It's great stuff, man. And then, yeah, and then of course, much. The more mid-state it is, the more excitement there is in, involved in that. So uh, in any case, I got injured. I worked for, I retired from Verizon. I worked for Verizon for 31 years. And then I and then I went to work for Lucent Technologies. I was a manager in charge of building the new central office after 9-11 towers went down. And so yeah. I really got, that was quite, quite involved. I had 65 guys working for me. And it was a 24 hour seven and it was an un, un uh, it was, uh, you couldn't win that type of a job. I just couldn't win. You know, if I was, if I was trying to get some sleep, I'd be yelled at. If I got to, I didn't get enough sleep, I got yelled at. So you can't win, you know, when that pressure's on and it goes like that. Anyway, I worked for there about three years. I had enough of it and moved on. And uh, I came home, my wife was home and I, I lived in New Jersey, and I said, uh, "We're going to live. We're going to move to Athens, Pennsylvania." Well, what's what's in Athens? I said, "I don't know. I'm just going there. <laughs> Something, something's calling me there," and that's what we did. And now we're still in Athens to this day. That was uh, nine, 2003, right? I worked for uh, Schwann's uh, Home Service Delivery, uh, and I got hurt. And I not on the job, but I got hurt. I I was pulling a weed whacker, and I pulled my uh, rotor cuff off my shoulder. Oh, yeah. So uh, what happened was, found out 
that the shoulder was no good and they couldn't fix it. They had to replace it. So they replaced it and then that didn't work. So they did a total replacement, five surgeries, and I have very little use and 100% pain in your shoulder forever. And it's been that way forever. So That's I, 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 no, but I live with that. So my, um, the reason I'm saying that is because of what happened is I got into a stationary position here and where you're seeing me right now. And I, I said, you know what? Let me go buy some 50 cent pieces and start looking at the Kennedys. So I went to the bank and they were really willing to give me those rolls and sell me the, the cases of them. And I started looking at them and I, and I didn't know really what I was looking for. It was silver for the most part. I didn't look for any uh, varieties or anything, which, I, you know, I see where I probably sent a bunch of them back. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it it got me it got me into the flow of things, and what I think my wife kind of liked it that I was busy because <laughs> I'm a, I was I'm very I was a very active type of person. So yeah. now, what, what am I going to do? And I have kind of found this, and this this thing has taken a life of its own. It's growing, it's growing for me, and I just absolutely uh, uh, love what's going on here. So. For about six years ago and to now, uh, I have learned so much about the coin business and and how it functions. I'm able to pick up on fair prices quicker than I ever did. I mean, I had to learn the hard way with that a lot of times. You know, I bought stuff that was probably well overpriced. You know, but yeah. it's okay. But it, it was a, it was a, it's still the coin is still here. You know, it's not it's not dissipating. I, I got. Uh, I, I sometimes, sometimes a show and tell is better. I have books uh, filled up with different quarters and 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 fifty cent pieces and all this stuff. And the more I did, the more I did in this, the more I liked it. And the eBay yeah. store, I've been, I've been selling on eBay out of necessity. All right, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I I had something done with silver silver keys recently. To try to help me bridge a gap here, and uh, the coins actually sold really well. So the giving tree, I sent that to St. Jude's. I didn't need it, so I sent the money to St. Jude's. Uh, the coin selling is all I needed to do. I've I've sold because of uh, the gap filling. I've had to constantly throw uh, throw together gaps uh, here and there because eBay selling is great, but if it doesn't go for like two weeks, you're you're you know if you're not you know, it just, yeah, it's, it. It, it just, it just, it's just tough at times. Um, and that was good that Silver Keys uh, stepped up and did that. And it was all awesome. And that's what the community, uh, that's what I love about the coin community. Oh, yeah, I mean, I've, yeah. I've stepped up and helped many people in this, in this business when I can see that they needed it or, or, or found out that they need it. And I just, I, it, it just doesn't bother me. If I have it, they, they, they're going to get it. You know, I had a nice little chat with uh, J uh, Gleason. Uh, yesterday, and he he's a he's a great guy, but he's going through these struggles too, just like anybody else. We live a uh, uh, day by day. I haven't bought anything, that, uh, almost nothing this week. Now, I bought a little bit here and there, only because I have to I have to continue to feed my store in eBay. I, right. I really don't want, I really don't want to spend any money right now, but if I don't, then I don't get enough action. I have to constantly uh, fuel that. Anyway, the store's new. I've been eBay for a long time, and I've been pretty successful uh, on and off. Like I said, there's stretches and time periods where, boy, boy. And now I'm on Social Security, so I get that. My wife works two jobs, and we so we manage most of the time. But there are times when that little bit of extra boost really, really can help. Um, but now, what's really interesting this past weekend. Or, or the weekend, before, yeah, the, I think it was the ones that last when the rookies did the uh, did the thing for me, the, the giving tree. Um, I, I, my sales that night were excellent, and I think everybody got a real good deal. Now maybe they felt that they could use it, and maybe not. Maybe they wouldn't have bought that night, but they did. And they all got a good deal, fair, not a very fair deal. eBay sold that same night about the same amount. That's well, why that's I didn't. Cool. Need it. 
That's why I didn't need the giving tree. That's why I sent the giving tree money to St. Jude's. But it, that's what happens, you know. But had, had we did this, the coin sale first, I probably wouldn't have even done the giving tree to begin with. But it all works out. It's nice. But the coin, the coin, I I can't tell you how exciting I get when I get some new coins come in. When I when the package is arrived, when I bought something from somebody that I know it's something that I want to see. I I want to show you a couple of things if I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. Uh, let me let me uh, see if I can put this up here. This is a coin I bought from Big Flip. Nice. Okay. Look at this now. Take check check this out. When he when he sold this to me, I don't know if he recognized this. I did, and I called him about it. I'm I'm investigating it right now. Do you see that 1966 SMS? Yep. Okay. And then it says MS67. Just so you know, that's not that's not possible. That's not possible. It either has to be MS67 for a regular strike 1966, or it has to be SP67. So if this SP turns out, that, yeah, if this was not a, a, a SMS set, then this 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 coin's worth $3,500. If it is an SMS set, then they have to change that to an SP67, and it's only worth about $70. Big difference, but I bought it from him for thirty dollars, and then I, because oh, I, yes. I, I saw that and I recognized it right away. I said, "Well, let me buy it." But if it turns out to be an MSN, I'll make it right with him. Big flip, you know. I know that's the way it goes in the business. You know, I could land up selling this to somebody on eBay if I put it up there, and then I get the one who had to be okay. But I did tell him about it. I mean, but that's the that's what the learning has done for me in this business. As I pick up on stuff like that, now I'm not perfect. Right. Really. Okay. Well, and that's one thing that I enjoy about this hobby is the community, right? And yeah. one thing that's that's mentioned a lot in the interviews that I've done with people is we come from all different walks of life. Now, people like Big Flip, people like Coin Crew, people like coin help you they all have brick and mortar coin shops they th that's what they do right mm -hmm. but the general hobbyist you know i if it wouldn't have been for coins i would never have met you um yeah. how, how frequently do i get to pennsylvania right um I, I i wouldn't have met big flip i wouldn't have met keith and angel i wouldn't have met a lot of these people because I was looking for community. I was looking to be able to plug in. And mm -hmm. so when you talk about, you know, Ida and you talk about these people, Silver Keys, and you talk about these people putting things together to help members of the community, I think it's absolutely awesome. Now, you said something that I want to step backwards to. Number one, thank you for your service. Um, I'm a fellow vet myself. And so, you know, I always appreciate uh, the men and women who have served for our country. So first off, I really want to acknowledge that and say thank you for that. The other thing is that um, they saw a need and your need was taken care of and you donated it to another cause. I, I, am, I really appreciate that. Um, a lot of times people would have something taken care of and they'd be like, just go ahead and send it to me anyway. So one thing that i like about a lot of people in this in this community is the level of integrity mm -hmm. that you find in a lot of folks and that really has impressed me um i've I, i've really enjoyed uh seeing the level of people the gracious hearts uh being able to go and step in um help out when you can you know buy things when you can donate when you can um it's fun uh to uh, you know I, I always get a kick out of and this is where uh coin crew had their 10k giveaway last night I was, right I, I was there. crazy crazy to do tons of giveaways it was a riot 
And it was like, well, there's that empty box. It's like, and I kept I, I was driving my car, I watching on my phone, right? I'm just like, they can't give away an empty box. <laughs> they can't give away an empty box. Less than 50 bucks. I'm like, put a, put a maple leaf in there. They can't get an empty box. Um, <laughs> and, but what's fun about that is if, if I were to win that, I would be like, wow, you know, this is so cool. But I was able to make somebody else's night. And, you know, 50 bucks is 50 bucks. But uh, to enlighten and in, ingrain the love of coin or the love of numismatics or the love of the, the hobby, uh, ingrain that culture of giving and sharing, uh, it's just fun, right? It it's addictive. It's just fun. And it is addictive. It is addictive. It is. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of stories about why you got started. Now, you said that you you got I want, Yeah. I, can, I, can I go back to something I want to make? I yeah, wanna, please, uh, please, please. I, I want to make sure that everybody understands. The decision to – I want I to be clear with this because – I don't want anybody to misunderstand anything. The decision to send that money to St. Jude's came in a discussion, out of a discussion with Silver Keys and myself. And we decided that would be the best thing to do. I didn't need the money so I could send it to them. And I could have returned all that money because most of it came through PayPal. But uh, she said she would take care of that. But I, I just want to make it clear that that decision to, to send it, and I wasn't, in, I didn't have any problem with that. I just want to make it clear that she, she and I came to that to get to. to uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think anybody that heard that would have uh, would have misunderstood. What I was pointing at was integrity. Um, okay. The fact that it's like, and that's that's why I wanted to bring that to the forefront. Um, okay. That's why I went with the integrity piece. Um, no, I absolutely heard that, and that's I wanted to go back on that because I wanted people to key into the fact that there are a lot of people who will just do right everybody in our community has moments right um sure. for the most part for the most part um they're just a bunch of good folk yes I mean, they are. Really, right and yeah. that's uh i, I really people. really enjoy that so let's get back to let's get back to you kind of your story so okay. what i would like to find out is you said the more you did it. So you talked about pennies, you talk about errors and attributions. If if there was a thing that you collect that is just your thing, what would that be? What's what is that thing? I would say it's really hard because it's a couple. Really I zero in on and I won't let go of, and that is um quarters. And mostly modern day quarters, but not necessarily all. I go into the fifties and sixties. Fifties, I know I consider modern, but I go all the way back into looking. Um, I don't. Okay, beyond thirty-two, nineteen thirty-two, and beyond, uh, uh, you know, the other direction. I don't really do too much with. I I don't know enough about it, and this this I have enough on my plate trying to figure out all the stuff in front of that. Yeah. So I, I try to stay within my boundaries with this stuff. Although once in a while I cross them, uh, but I don't collect Morgans. I don't collect, I, and it's important to understand that I got early burned in Morgans, where I bought some Morgans and they were all counterfeits, and I realized I couldn't even tell, and I, I'd have to learn how to do uh, uh, disseminate that or buy it from a reputable place. Right. Period. Yeah. Morgan's the most counterfeited uh, silver dollar we have. Anyway, uh, so I would say Franklin's is more, one of my favorites. I love Franklin Proofs. I can't get enough of those. Uh, I love the Bugs Bunnies. I, I think they're so cool. Uh, 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 and the Kennedys. And, and mostly uh, I, I, mostly the Silver Kennedys. You know, the SMS heads, the 40 percenters and 90s. And then, of course, 92 to, and up is and, and silver, silver Kennedys. And I... I kind of zero in on two things. I kind of zero in on those, but I also zero in on whether they're silver or not. It's important to me right now that they are silver, you know, because yeah. silver is going to go up and like no, no tomorrow. And not that I'm looking to sell them or make money on them, 
but I just I just need to be able to have that as a reserve, as a uh, protect, a wealth protector. You know, having your wealth protected. Having said that, I'm still selling a lot of it because I have to. So that's not that's so. But if I didn't if I didn't focus on getting the silver like this, uh, Frostbite, I would never have had enough to sell. You know, uh, over the last six years, I've sold over 800 rounds of silver. So. Oh wow, that's a lot of silver. Yeah, yeah, I had like um, I had about 1,500. Not counting my uh, uh, um, conventional junk silver. I think uh, I need I to get on your distro list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, and you know what? I, I'll tell you what. I made some deals. I don't know if you saw those go on. Uh, I know that you did participate in a little bit of that, but I I sold when I first got on the Silver Keys channel the first time. I sold twenty rounds, and Big Flip bought them. Or Big T, I don't remember which one. So one of those guys. Yeah. Uh, all twenty, because I sold, I sold two for sixty. Two for sixty, and they, they bought all twenty. Six hundred uh, dollars. That was a great price. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a great price, and and I I paid the shipping, so I mean they, that's even better. <laughs> yeah, it worked out to about twenty eight dollars a piece. They they paid for yeah. this. And it was all a mixture of, of, of silver rounds that they could sell for 35 or, or 38 bucks a piece. They're nice, though. I don't begrudge that. I, they saved my life. I mean, I needed the money that night. So you, you do what you got to do when you when yeah, you go through that. And, and, and uh, I go into these, I try to avoid getting myself into these corners because that's usually when you really get hurt the most. Not that the community is hurting you, but there's nobody out here not looking for a good deal. Everybody's out here looking for oh, a good no. deal. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Everybody's looking for a good deal. And there's nothing no. wrong with that. I think that's great. And the fact that they're even looking is good, you know? Uh, like this, uh, I, I was uh, trying to uh, sell the the, uh, the 2020 uh, limited uh, silver set. Nobody wants it. That's it. And and um, I don't know, one of, one of the uh, people in the chat uh, scanned it out. And, and the thing is worth about $350. And I was selling it for $250. But nobody wanted it, so that's that's how it goes. So I'm not selling it now. So I pulled it off. I said, you know, it's like, no more. Yeah, it's not, it's okay. a lot of times, a lot of times things comes up at, and I'm like, man, that is a good deal. But it's just inopportune timing, oh, um, you know. Yeah. And then there are other times where I've got plenty of cash flow to play with, and it's just your standard run-of-the-mill stuff so it's like uh i'll buy a couple pieces just to help out but you know you're I, waiting for that good deal so sure i understand now uh i have i had a uh, i don't know if you've seen this uh, mickey mickey you i've seen him in the chats you've seen him and i not to pick out anybody by name I, of course that's, that's, his, that's his channel name uh <clears throat> he wanted he wanted something i had but he I had he wanted me to wait, and I said no problems, and I waited like three weeks. I sold it to him and waited three weeks, and we we got it shipped out yesterday. So it's it's not that most people will do that, but you know I've I've had people wait for me too. You know I I wanted that like right. like um, uh, native warrior, you know native warrior, right? Yeah, you see, you see well, it, you right? did it for me. You held something for me for three days so that I could. Uh, to pick yeah. up a Morgan. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, I fully understand that, uh, that you'll work with people. And that's, again, that's one of the things that, uh, made me want to talk to you and say, you know, let's, let's, let's get your story out there. It's really easy for people that have engaged for a long time to talk to one or two people, but we see staples in, in chat, in these channels, like you get on, you get on to Coin Crew, you get on to Big Flip, or you get on to Just Stack It, or you get into the same, these uh, Silver Keys, or you get into Ida's channel. You see these same people over and over and over again. But who are they, right? What What is it that drives them? What is their story? And so that's why I want you here, is because I want to know who who's John Howe? What makes him tick? Mm. Okay. 
one thing that I will want to say is when I I do travel a lot of these different locations, like you say, and I do that, but I also pay attention to the chat. I really try to stay with the chat room as much as I can because you can learn an awful lot about people listening to what they're saying. Oh yeah. Yeah. And and it tells me sometimes where people are hurt. People are afraid to ask for help a lot of times. And it's important to me, if I have the ability to help somebody, to help them. You know, it's always going to be that way with me. It's never been different. Even I made a lot of money in my days. And I, I belong to a local church here. And the church was hurting for funds. They, I mean, they were doing okay, but they, I, I put a lot of stuff in that church and never said it to anybody. I just did it. And my son put it in and I paid for everything. I didn't care. But I was making the money. I was. That's what I. That's what. But that's what. If you can't do those things, if you have the funds and you can't do and help your fellow man, then what's the point? I don't oh yeah, that. I completely agree. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, the coin collecting has just been so much fun. I have so many different things here. I mean, it's so it's so. Sometimes it's like hard to zero in on any given thing. But if I had to give on anything, it would be I love I love the Silver Quarters and I love the Franklins and the Kennedys. So I, I told you before, I'm a modern day coin guy. I like the modern day stuff and the proof pennies. You can't you can't uh, the the the, the, the oh, I'm getting tongue tied here. When you talk about proof pennies, for example, Ross Brady, it's hard to understand why they don't get the cameo on some of these. Or even cameo, it's weird. I mean, some of these pennies always should get it. I think out of every coin, that's the hardest one for me to pick. And I, I mean, it, I know I can look at it and grade it, but is it going to be cameo or deep cameo, or is it not going to be either? I I I I just don't know how they do it. You know, I I've sent coins in. And I I look at their they, you know they have CGS has yeah. websites. I look and do comparisons, and these coins are there. And I don't I don't get when it comes back it doesn't even come back cameo. It's like I don't, and you can't. So it, it, it coin grading is a very difficult thing to do. It really is. But so try well, to and I it. think it depends on the day that the graders have it. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. because you can get two coins that are almost exactly the same, and they come back way different. Or the coin that you think is really good comes back at a shorter or smaller grade than the other one, and it's like, wow, this just doesn't make sense. So there's a lot of nuance to it for certain. It's just it's all subjective. So I mean, there's very yeah. little up there. Oh, that's for certain. Yeah, that's there for certain. Is, um, yeah, yeah, so now I, I'm not going to even even uh, when this thing hall hits, and I'm not going to get into political uh, sphere, but I do know a lot of things because outside of the coins, I've become a researcher for a bunch of people on dealing with the political issues we have today, and that's going to have a big impact on all of us down the road. But I'll leave it at that. But the coin, I turned to my wife and said, no matter what happens. I'm not leaving the coin business. I might leave eBay because I don't really, you know, I don't really want to sell this stuff. I, I do it out of necessity. I don't really want to sell it. Yeah. Uh, some of it, some of it I don't care, but some of it I don't want to sell. I have some Franklins on there. <clears throat> I don't want to sell them. I have duplicates. That's why I'm doing it because I have duplicates. Uh, you know, like I have a, on on eBay right now. I have a a, a 1955. Um, Franklin uh, MS64 MS64 full bell lines that I'm selling for like $60. It's, it's, it's a really good price. 59 I think it is. But, but that, All that right, so you guys it. heard it here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're looking for a good Benji. You know where to go. Go check out his stuff. I'm going to put it's his on. link in the description. <laughs> do you have my uh, eBay store link? I do. I do have your eBay oh, okay. store. Um, I, I'm not, I'm buying very little right now because I'm getting ready to, to go to on vacation. Our family hasn't done a vacation in uh, a little over 10, 12 years. Oh, so we're sure. finally doing one. And so I'm like, my wife is like, you spend too much money. I'm going to kick your tail. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not buying much right now, but, um, 
That's all right. Yeah, no, I'll always... definitely put that in the description below, and we'll make sure that uh, that people know that. And I'll put it in the uh, I'll put it in the credit slide at the end of the. And, and, and you should put my email in there too. And because here's the deal, the core community is a great community. They go to eBay and they see something, they should contact me directly because I could give them probably a better deal, but I don't have to pay the eBay fees. I'm not trying to circumvent eBay all the time, but, but there's a there's a certain things on there that if people look at it and they really want to have it, I'll give them a better deal. I'll give I'll give them a better deal because then I'm not paying eBay fees. So. Yeah, but sometimes it's a necessity. It's a necessary evil, and and you you have a good reach in the coin community here, but mm -hmm. it might not be big enough, right? When you look at the number of people that go to eBay to look for something. Um, if it's just looking for a coin, they may just be looking to see what the price is sold for, right? They may not actually be buying a coin. And as they're looking for it, they stumble across yours and go, oh, that's a really good price. Yes. I'm going to do it. And I find yes. myself doing that all the time. I'll go look for a coin and I'll see something and go, uh, I always look at two things. Number one, do they do, if you're not satisfied, do they do the money back, right? If they don't do that, especially if it's an old type set coin or a Morgan or peace dollar or something like that. If they don't offer that, I don't buy from them. Okay. I just, so I you, you probably would buy from me because I got burned. Sketchy. I got, yeah. I got, I got burned. I got burned real bad. I talked to eBay about it. Uh, the guy, the guy, the per, whoever it was, I don't know if it's a guy. I'm, 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 that's a horrible son. So whoever it was claimed that it wasn't what I sold them. So I at that time I had returns, 30 days returns, and they returned it to me. It wasn't the coin. And I, I contacted Eva, and it's not my coin. And he said, Well, it's the way it goes. You gotta pay it back. I mean, that's the uh, eBay sellers have it really bad. So what yeah, I yeah. what they I said, Well, how do I prevent this? She said, the, the, the person said to me, take don't return accept returns, but I could put in, I could put in that. Is always look. I have no returns, but it doesn't stop anybody from contacting me if they have an issue. They can contact yeah, me. Yeah. I always will work that out. I put that in there a lot of times. I say, you know, if you, I'm not accepting returns, but if you have an issue, call, uh, contact me and we'll work it out. But I can't uh, about to return because that's what happens. And and people people are hard. It's a horrible to say, but you know what? I I'm not a big business, and I can't I can't play the game oh no I, yeah i completely understand yeah. and, and there are people out there that will game the system yeah they, they know do. the tricks they know what they're looking for they have you know they have something and this is this is a counterfeit um i did it um on uh one of my counterfeit streams and they'll know it's a counterfeit and then they'll replace it <laughs> They'll yeah. put their coin back in your holder and send it back to you. So, yeah, there are definitely some things that you got to watch for. So, um, but again, I, the mm -hmm. key about doing this is buying from a trusted source. And so, if you know somebody in the community that has a page like this, um, I would have less issue buying it. But your random Joe Schmo, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna question it a little bit. Uh, but that's me. I, I've been, like I said, I got burned on eBay too. So um, I have a little bit of a. Uh, it's it's not as bad as Etsy because <laughs> everything on Etsy's fake. Oh, yeah, I don't think there's anything it. real on Etsy. No, you can't trust anything on there. In fact, yeah. I had people come to me and say, "How can you sell a coin from this when you can get it from Etsy?" I said, "Well, we'll go buy it from Etsy." What am I supposed to say? I, I, I'm not going to get into a dissertation with somebody over that, you know. They, they can just go yeah. ahead and buy it from Etsy yeah. and see, see what they get, you know. So yeah, see. go buy go buy your brass Morgan. You're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's horrible oh. that what will happen. It's horrible what what people will be taking advantage of. Uh, frustrating, it really. Yeah. Is. I completely agree. Well, John, I the have, last question I have for you. I'm going to kind of wrap this up. We've been going about thirty okay. minutes. Thank so you. the last the last question I have for you is something that I ask everybody. And you are 72 years young. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you have a plethora of knowledge 
that a young pneumocyst wouldn't have or their younger generation. If there was one piece of advice that you could give anybody in this hobby, what would that be? Get to know, if you're getting into the hobby, get to know your local coin dealer and their coin shops. Get to be friends with them. There's a wealth of knowledge in there. And that, and when you have questions and you get into the community, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, you know, it's like I've seen people ask questions in chat and they get some pretty good answers. Be not afraid to ask questions. And just be, I would say, if, it uh, depends on how new you are in business. Um, be careful of the very, the very expensive coins right now. Make sure that you really got your feet on the ground when you look and you know what you're looking at. And and before before you spend a lot of money, because other times it's a one way street, and you don't really want to go down that street and then put yourself in, you know, if it's a small amount of money and you want to learn, it's fine. Everybody goes through that. I don't think, but I think the local coin shops is really a good place to start. Get to know yeah, people. Yeah, I think that's know. that's really good advice. And the one thing about doing things with your local coin shop is test and test again, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a good coin shop, they will test those things in front of you because they have a reputation to uphold. Sure. Um, one of the things I say is that if a coin shop is unwilling to test a coin in front of you, leave. <laughs> You don't so, need to be buying something from them, right? No, uh, because it's a matter of integrity. And no, and anybody who has a brick and mortar shop knows that. Right. You can't leave the coin out of your hands. You can't leave it out of your sight. Because it's too easy to switch coins. Oh, yeah. 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 And if you don't know what you're dealing with now, I have a coin shop that well, actually retired, unfortunately for me. Uh, I would not have a problem giving a hand them a coin. I mean, I've known him really well. So I have. He, there's never been an issue. So I think that's where you have to get to. I think you get to that level where you really feel that. And then even then, even then, just just common sense stuff. You know, there's no reason for him to take that coin or her to take that coin anywhere. I no. And if, if you think about, so there's a term called best practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Best practice or a leading practice is probably a more efficient term. And that is to main con maintain control over your possessions, whether it is jewelry, whether it is stemware, whether it is artwork, whether it sure. is coin, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're going to take something in for appraisal, that thing doesn't leave your sight. Mm. If they have to take it, you go with it. If they refuse to do it, then you leave. That's right. You take Fine. it with you. You do not leave that in their possession. You don't say, well, let me go back and clean this for you. Nope. <laughs> nope. Oh, <laughs> You're oh, not cleaning oh, my jewelry. You're not doing anything out of my sight. They have I portable guess. cleaners and things like that they can do. So best practice, never let that thing out of your sight. Um now, don't even let them walk away from the counter with your coin yeah. because you don't know what they have in their hand or things of that nature. So anyway, great piece yeah. of advice. Uh, ladies just, and gentlemen, oh, go ahead. Can I say one, can I say yes, one more thing? It's very, very important. Um, a, lot of, a lot of our folks go to coin shows uh, all over the place. A lot of them do. I've watched this stuff all the time. Uh, Silver Seeker did a, uh, did a video on the sleight of hand it's so fast you it, they slowed it down and it was hard to see it where yep. the guy i mean these are these are things we're dealing with so but you're right so that, i i i had i just wanted to give a shout out to silver seeker because that was a great that was a great video uh and it yeah showed, and there's uh, um there's there's a couple of them going around about a couple of guys that are going to coin shops uh going to coin shows that are doing that uh, not only with coin but um, with money where they're palming the money and they count out, but they're counting out the same bill. So when they hand it to you, you're only getting a fraction of what they've actually counted out because they're counting it and they're rotating it. So it looks like it's continuing. So they're counting, but they're actually flipping that same bill over 
So they're counting the same bill two or three times. So you may count out $600, but there's actually only like 480. Yeah. And when you grab your money, slide it in the till, unless you're going to count it all out. So there's, again, there's some safe practices, right? Everybody lays all their money out on the table. It gets laid out flat, right? Just like you would at a bank. A bank lays their table. They lay it out all the way across. Um, if you're going to be in business and you're going to be handling money like that, then that, you know, those kind of practices um, will help safeguard that. But sleight of hand, if they're good, it's hard to catch. It and so baffles me. it baffles me to no end, it really does, to watch this video and watch that, 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 and they pick on these guys. They know, they know to go to them because they're new, they're naive. They count all the money out, and then they let the guy who's paying pick all the money back up in his hands. I'm just wondering why would you one? What I, I wasn't sure why they did that, but they did it. If that guy handed me that money back, I would have counted it again right then before he handed me money. Yeah, and I would have caught him. See, yeah, but, but the guy's naive. The guy who it was a young kid and is probably fairly new in the business. And well, it's a lesson learned. It really is a tough lesson, but it's a lesson learned. Anyway, that's uh, that. Yeah, I want to thank you. Uh, this was uh, awesome. I really appreciate this. Uh, I had a, I had a lot of fun. Um, again, ladies and gentlemen, John Howe, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, you know, we will definitely see you in the stream. And uh, again, appreciate you being here. Thank you.